to um, talk about how autistic might be set up. Firstly, thanks for being invited. I got uh, invited to do a sculpture um, by the, uh, the Naval College in, in Greenwich. The building was originally built for seamen, um, so I was looking at the ring architecture here to get some influences from that, and looking inside some of the buildings, getting the influences of, of shapes and styles that might, might work for me. The famous Cutty Sark, and I was trying to get links with that as well, and how people ring together, how a body of men ring together. So I did a, I, I did a first sort of drawing of, of this sort of link, of how this chain of everyone coming together and being part of a whole and supporting each other on their journey around the seven seas and trying to get that feeling of, 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 of movement of the sea. When I did this, obviously the idea was it was going to be hollow, but I, I couldn't see that to the end. But the idea of having shadows of, of the past and future within the sphere. So the next stage is making it into, into, into more of a solid object, to get some sort of feel of it the depth and flow of it. But all of this looks very straightforward and simple, but when you start looking inside, realize how much work's gone into just doing that. Each, each piece of wire just equals to just one leg or arm or body, and each one there. Um, and I think it's 230 or something figures. So therefore, we're almost talking about a thousand bits of wire. Take when you're doing a sphere, has to be a perfect sphere because if it's not, it just isn't anything. And being that you're going to see through it, it doesn't matter where you stand, you're always going to see an edge, you're always going to see the exact shape of, of, of the sphere. I started off with sort of doing some measurements and then quickly moved that to one side so that it, it was organic and was rhythmic and it wasn't trying to repeat exactly the pattern all the way around was close enough to give a uniform sort of feel to it. In the building is, is this silver plate. And I was quite impressed by this. In each um, of the small circles is a medal that one of the sailors that had stayed there never received because they died before receiving it. And I somehow wanted to get the influence of that in the piece. And so the, the, the top of it was looking like stars, but they were the holes left on the medals that were received by, by the sailors. On the base, again, influence of the sea, sextant, and a clock. Both, by those two means, obviously, you can navigate uh, around the globe. And I felt there was just so many opportunities to um, develop stories within the piece. A guy, which was made out of ivory, um, but inside it was inserted a little hole which was filled with lead. So every time you threw it, it would always land on the same, same number. And I went to all the traders and got loads of different things because I thought their influence of a contemporary now bit of Greenwich is a, it's a very strong influence. So they all either loaned or gave me elements of their craft and I put that texture onto the clay. Some of the clay pipes they actually would, would have tobacco already in them, you'd smoke it and you'd just chuck it away afterwards. A head and a pipe could be the same thing. And I had hundreds of heads. One of the origin fears of making it a complete sphere at the end was how to break this up into sections for it to be poured. Bronze can't be poured into uh, too large a volume, and therefore we had to divide it up into. I think it was 27 or 28 sections. Um, and then you put a fiberglass jacket on, on the top of the silicon rubber, and therefore that's supporting the rubber underneath. So when you take it apart, the rubber doesn't move around, it stays exactly where it should be. So once you've got it all together, you take it apart. So the fiberglass jacket comes off, and then you pull each bit of rubber, and then quickly put it back into the fiberglass uh, support jacket. The inside was going to be open. I needed this to be a fine polish. We had to make sure that we had it exactly level to that mold because, again, you want to get a feel of a smoothness on the inside. And the only way you get that is if it's exactly in line. 
This is the putting the ceramic shell on. And again, the skill of putting the ceramic shell on, it's got to be the right thickness to take the heat when it's being poured into it. So each section, the guys in that department, just like the guys in wax, have a skill there that you've got to trust, that they're going to judge that that is going to be strong enough to take the heat. At this stage, Vince is putting it in a kiln, closing the door, heating it up, all the wax pours out the bottom, and therefore leaving the cavity um, for us to pour the bronze into later. So they put these two drums on the top, heat it up to high temperature, so that when they pour the bronze into it, it flows better round and round through the, through the, through the piece. So, if we've poured it, it's cooled down, um, and then we need to get rid of um, the ceramic shell and find the bronze underneath. This is normally done by um, sandblasting it. Then these guys had to polish all the inside. Every piece had to be refined, you polish it up, and this is going to be in a public place. So to make it flow smooth, we're having to soften all the edges without roughing up the, the inside. So the details will come out. The, um, the, the one to point out here is a pineapple. I've got told the story that a lot of sailors used to come back from um, sailing around the world and then bring back this exotic fruit and just put it outside the house or stick it to the, uh, outside the house on the railing. So we were all you know, look at me, you know, I've done the seven seas and everything else. And so I thought pineapple was an appropriate, appropriate one of the heads. So we're putting it back together. Uh, what well, Vince had to make a whole metal bracket and it was smaller than the sphere would be, with all brackets and, um, to make and support it so it was very strong. So, and you imagine going back to 210 figures, the figures, each with two arms and two legs. And each one he had to clamp in, fix in line with the other leg or arm. At the same time, there was people welding on the outside, pretending on the outside, and on the turntables. It was also moving around. So you had to move your chair as you were going around it. The thing with, with it was, which obviously, until I put it together, I knew the most important thing was the shadows. And so I thought that here, the feeling of, of 300 years of history, the linking of men, the, the story of that was all encompassed on, on the floor, and it just moved around. Thank you all for coming in.